Civil Air Patrol in Vermont and nationwide has a long uh, history of service uh, assisting the military in our role as uh, the volunteer auxiliary of the U.S. Air Force. Um, it was launched literally just before Pearl Harbor, uh, December 1st, 1941, where a lot of uh, civilian uh, pilots around the, uh, particularly in the coastal areas, were looking to help to, uh, to help <laughs> um, defend the uh, homeland against the uh, Nazi submarine threat. And they contributed a great deal. Many, uh, many of our uh, early members lost their lives in this service. Uh, they were successful in spotting uh, almost 200 uh, Nazi submarines uh, and attacked 57, as you see there, uh, by dropping uh, bombs uh, by hand out the uh, cockpit window and, uh, in fact, sank two of them. Um, since that time, our role uh, has expanded, particularly with the uh, Federal Reserve, excuse me, the Federal Authority for our service uh, in 1948 when the uh, to 1946 when the um, Air Force became a, a separate a branch of the armed forces. Um, this built on our earlier missions, uh, Homeland Security Search and Rescue, uh, Emergency Transport of uh, Personnel and Cargo, uh, Border Patrol, uh, Forest Fire Spotting and, and Flight Training. Some of these don't, are not operable anymore, uh, particularly the, um, the air defense of, uh, you know, a mission that we had back then, though we do serve a, a small function then helping to provide slow moving targets for a lot of uh, US Air Force units around the country. Uh, I also wanna note that we, uh, per the earlier uh, presentation you just heard on Tropical Storm Irene, the Vermont Wing and other units uh, of the Civil Air Patrol provided uh, uh, disaster imagery following Irene and, uh, and Sandy and also where I lived in New York at the time. Uh, the Vermont wing and many other wings flew down to New York and provide FEMA with thousands of images helping to document the destruction from those natural disasters. Um, Hillary, you're uh, moving around very quickly here, if I can, there you go. Okay, so our overall mission statement, and thank you, Hillary, for your help, uh, supporting America's communities with emergency response, diverse aviation and ground services, youth programming and promotion of airspace and cyber power. And I'll be talking a little bit about each of those. Um, the, one of the unheralded missions of the Civil Air Patrol is aerospace education, something I've been very involved with for the past few years. And um, that uh, promoting uh, understanding and the importance of uh, airspace and uh, related uh, services to our uh, Americans uh, Financial health and the security of the country is an important mission for us. Hillary, uh, Hillary if you can give me the next um, next program, please. Next slide. There you go. So, emergency services, as we mentioned earlier, um, uh, included search and rescue. Uh, one of our missions up here in Vermont is helping to look for lost hikers and missing aircraft, for example. Uh, defense supports for civil authorities, uh, that includes personnel transport, emergency supplies transport. We did that a lot nationwide in providing vaccines to remote communities with our Cessna aircraft. Uh, Homeland Security, counter drug, that should be fairly um, self explanatory. Uh, ROTC and junior ROTC flights, we just completed uh, several missions this past weekend with. Uh, uh, Air Force uh, ROTC cadets at Norwich University, familiarizing them with flight. A lot of them had never flown before. We, we give them the experience of sitting in the front seat of a powered aircraft. Um, something we also do for our cadets. We used to do a great deal of uh, unmanned aerial um, uh, aircraft uh, chase to help guide them into um, uh, airspace over the homeland that I don't think is an active mission anymore. And of course, sensor test and evaluation. Um, we do that, for example, with the uh, US, the uh, Department of Forestry up here in Vermont and other government agencies. Hillary, the next uh, slide, please. There we go. So cadet program is something, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have an unusual program if you compare it to the Boy Scouts and other similar youth programming around the country. Uh, it's uh, leadership and core values, of course, uh, integrity, uh, physical fitness, um, 
history uh, and, of course, uh, scientific uh, education as far as aerospace, uh, character development, leadership opportunities uh, are some of the key programs that are done on a weekly basis in our uh, three uh, composite squadrons up here in uh, Vermont. Aerospace education, as I mentioned, I'm director of aerospace education. Um, I provide week, uh, excuse me, monthly uh, lessons uh, in history and uh, current events to our many of our squadrons. I've personally gone into many high schools and elementary schools up here in northern Vermont talking about, uh, for the younger kids, uh, things that may, how, how does an airplane fly, I, uh, for example? How, what makes a rocket fly? What's going on in space uh, that week, whether it's a space station or satellite launches? Uh, the kids are very appreciative. Of, they especially love when I bring in some of our some of my colleagues who have served, and they can talk about their uh, service uh, flying in the various branches of the U.S. Armed Forces. Uh, they get very excited about that, uh, and it's a thrill to uh, help uh, bring them along in somehow you can serve the country through through aviation and just being a member of the military. We're not a recruitment arm of any of the branches. Um, but it's something that uh, we all like to talk about uh, for the older kids, especially it open. It, it might suggest some alternative careers for those who might not uh, be considering any college education. Uh, we talk about careers in aerospace also with those it just in general. I've brought to a high school uh, classes up here, uh, executives from JetBlue, from several large FBOs up here, aerospace companies uh, such as Beta Technologies, all of them talking about career opportunities that are possible uh, with, with a college education or without a college education, uh, something I think is uh, an important lesson in these times. Um, Hillary, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, this talks about the exact uh, details of our charter vis-a-vis -vis the uh, U.S. Air Force and our volunteer um, uh, designation uh, in the various tax codes and, of course, uh, our different responsibilities to the various uh, emergency services uh, throughout the United States. Um, Hillary, thank you for the next one. Okay, this I will not talk in detail, I can, uh, but basically it talks where we fall in under the various commands uh, in the Air Force and uh, to whom we report. Uh, all of our Air Airplane rescue missions, for example, are directed to the Air Force uh, Rescue Coordination Center, um, and that's, uh, that helps uh, streamline uh, getting access to our different squadrons around the country and uh, directing us to the right uh, site, and for, for example, missing uh, commercial or civilian aircraft that we're able to assist with. And I'll talk more about that later. Hillary, next slide, please. Thank you. This, uh, the, uh, different regions, uh, Vermont wing is with the Northeast region, and we exercise with all of the wings in this region fairly uh, often several times a year um, on massive uh, imagery and other kind of exercises uh, following a hypothetical uh, national disaster. This is a very important slide of civil air patrols, which is, is also referred to as a cost. Uh, uh, you stay on this one, Hillary. Thank you. Cost-effective multiplier. Our Cessna aircraft are remarkably uh, efficient in terms of cost, uh, costing about $165 an hour. Uh, we also bring to that uh, an ability to fly for uh, several hours as opposed to some other uh, airframes out there. Um, I've been on missions that have lasted six or seven hours all around Vermont on uh, photographic reconnaissance missions. Um, carrying two or three people and perhaps some light cargo as, as well or uh, to fill up the back seat, whatever the weight uh, limits are. But that's something that uh, we, we'd we like to emphasize that we provide a very cost-effective platform for search and rescue and the other services we provide. Um, Hillary, ne next slide, please. So emergency services, this is something that uh, we're very proud of, of course, um, providing uh, rapid response to uh, whatever emergencies are, are put in front of us, missing aircraft, as I mentioned, disaster relief. Um, we uh, 
with a Cessna aircraft, you can fly uh, very uh, relatively high speeds and loiter over an area looking for uh, whether it's damage uh, for photography or missing uh, personnel or, or aircraft, as I mentioned. Um, the loitering is, is an extremely valuable capability of the uh, Cessna 172 and 182. And um, our pilots are, of course, quite uh, proficient and expert and experienced in the various uh, types of flying required in the mountains of Vermont. Um, and I'm very proud of working with these uh, men and women. Next slide, please, uh, Hillary. Oh, some of the um, different missions I flew on the uh, several years ago was called the Fertile Keynote Mission, the intercept training where the local uh, guard units get to practice on intercepting a slow flying uh, general aviation aircraft um, where we provide a target for uh, for the interceptors, the F-16s and so forth. I don't know if they're doing that yet with the F-35s uh, in Vermont. I don't think they are but I'm sure that's in the future. Uh, I mentioned about the UAV support. Uh, that's something they did uh, for several years, just helping clear the airspace around um, the various uh, Reapers and so forth that might be coming into various Air Force bases up in this part of the country and other parts of the country. Um, perimeter surveys, that's something uh, that I've participated in as well, just flying a uh, a line on the ground and taking pictures around certain uh, real estate or uh, infrastructure as directed by FEMA or other government agencies. Uh, we're able to get to sites, as I mentioned, fairly quickly uh, in visual flight rules uh, conditions and get those photographs uploaded uh, within a few minutes uh, of our landing back at our mission base or any other uh, available uh, support site. Next slide, Hillary, please. Uh, back to my favorite subject, aerospace education. Um, I've had a lot of fun with that. The kids are, are terrific. Um, I get. I remember I worked several years with Cambridge Elementary before the uh, pandemic up here, and I would get, you know, in talking about, uh, let's say, uh, the importance of volunteer service in Vermont, I would ask the kids a question like, what does Vermont not have a lot of? Uh, uh, I was, of course, referring to people the need to volunteer, and but the responses from these first graders or second graders usually came to something like uh, pandas or something that we did, they didn't think we had enough of. So uh, that they were, uh, but the questions usually were very intelligent, very entertaining, and uh, hopefully I imparted some information and some inspiration from the lessons uh, and the biographies I presented. I also. Uh, these these programs also involve field trips to airports and uh, giving a lot of these kids their first close look at uh, airplanes. Uh, I remember I took a, a class from Barry uh, about two years ago. It was frankly one of the best days of my life. A lot of the kids had, had never seen an airplane up close. Uh, a lot of them had never been to Burlington um, and uh, the Burlington Airport, certainly. So uh, in, in introducing them to the personnel at the airport, uh, the personnel who uh, helped us uh, at the guard, who gave us a great tour of their equipment and services. Uh, it was uh, several of the parents had written me, uh, several parents in this fifth and sixth grade class, that it was one of the best days of their kids' lives. And I, uh, that meant a lot to me. And uh, I invite anyone out there in the audience to uh, join with us in this uh, educational mission um, and to uh, help uh, bring aerospace and emergency services uh, a little closer as far as information and, and opportunity to uh, a lot of the youth in Vermont. Uh, let's see what else. So yeah, we, we, we talk about military service. That's very important. Uh, I have no military background, uh, but I am enthusiastic about the opportunities it does offer a lot of the youth in Vermont. And um, as I mentioned, we frequently bring in uh, officers and veterans to talk to the kids about their experience and uh, the gratifying uh, careers that they've had in service to our country. Uh, cyber emphasis, there is an active um, cyber education program at Civil Air Patrol helping 
uh, high school students get educated about the opportunities in cyber defense, and we have some programs that uh, are very um, accessible uh, to them, and I know it's a very popular choice for a lot of those in the Vermont uh, cadet squadrons. Next slide, please, Hillary. Um, this is, this covers some of the uh, some of the things I've already talked about. This is uh, the Civil Air Patrol is a uh, is a gateway for a lot of our cadets into the military, uh, Air Force, Army, uh, and of course the Marines and Navy. Maybe maybe not so much, but certainly they're very drawn to the aerospace. Uh, several of our cadets have gone on to the uh, service academies. Uh, I know. Uh, Colonel Breckville, the former commander of the Vermont Wing, uh, two of her children had gone into service academies, and she talks quite enthusiastically about uh, how Civil Air Patrol helped her kids um, be more qualified for those service academies, West Point and the U.S. Air Force Academy, to name two. Uh, a lot of our members are uh, Air Force uh, Academy and West Point graduates, and um, they're very enthusiastic about uh, bringing those opportunities to a lot of our cadets. Uh, a lot of uh, several of our cadets I know have become uh, qualified private pilots, uh, got their PPLs um, as an adjunct to their service in the Civil Air Patrol here in Vermont and went on to become aviators for the Marine Corps and the U.S. Air Force. Um, let's see. That's uh, thank you, uh, Hillary. Next slide, please. All right. In the Vermont wing. We have, uh, I think it's, a, we have approximately 200 members, six squadrons based all around uh, the state. Uh, the largest being here in uh, South Burlington at Burlington International Airport. Um, Hillary, can you go back one, please? I've just not finished. Um, so uh, the smaller squadrons, uh, Bennington, Rutland, Springfield, Montpelier, Barry has a very large contingent. The Bennington squadron had just stood up their cadet uh, cadre, and they're having an enormous success in recruiting young Vermonters to their program. Uh, I think they've grown to about 20 cadets in the space of three months, and uh, Captain Mercer and Captain Friday are uh, uh, ex ex exemplary leaders and educators uh, in that regard, and uh, any, any of the people online listening who have uh, families down in Bennington and have an interest in this, I encourage you to get in touch with them about the opportunities there. Uh, Springfield, all of these, uh, several of these uh, squadrons participated in the recent thunder over New Hampshire air show, providing backup, working uh, various services there on a volunteer basis to support the uh, air show. And they do that, all of the cadets do that on a regular basis uh, when the opportunity presents itself. And they have a lot of uh, fun doing that. Um, and get to meet uh, other, uh, other cadets from other wings, and uh, of course, get involved in a lot of uh, very interesting uh, aviation events. Uh, next slide, please, Hillary. So this is an introduction to our uh, two airframes we have in Vermont. We have a Cessna uh, 172, which is the older model. Uh, that I believe is with our Bennington uh, squadron. Uh, the technical information is all there. These are, uh, I had never sat in the back seat of a Cessna uh, before joining the Civil Air Patrol. I was able to fit in very comfortably, much to my astonishment. And um, uh, we generally, the crews generally are three people, the uh, mission pilot, the mission observer in the right front seat, and the air, uh, airborne photographer in the back seat. So we sometimes, when, uh, when it's not possible to have three, we have two people uh, obviously, the mission pilot and the photographer can sit in the uh, front right, um, performing his or her uh, duties, uh, taking photographs of the ground. Uh, the technical, the uh, all of the uh, equipment, obviously, is state of the art. Um, we have the ELT finders. If you see, look in the back of that aircraft, you'll see the antenna on the bottom for the um, the electronic uh, locator beacon uh, searches that we rotate from the cockpit to get a good bearing on uh, beacons from downed aircraft or missing hikers. Uh, that takes a bit of, all of this takes a bit of training, obviously, to uh, to um, get comfortable with, and that's an ongoing process. Uh, we have 
exercises, generally uh, once a month, sometimes more often. Um, next slide, please, Hillary. Okay, this is the uh, newer airframe. We have a relatively new uh, Cessna 182 up in uh, Burlington. Um, that's uh, that's got a state-of-the-art Garmin 1000 uh, cockpit display that I'm even after a few years still getting comfortable with using the navigational uh, equipment. But I'm past few missions, I've gotten pretty good at it. So uh, there's a lot of training, a lot of resources available to get you up to speed, uh, even if you haven't been in the cockpit for a while, as we uh, as it was my experience uh, following the uh, slowdown during the pandemic. Um, one of the missions is fly, there's a reference there to an airborne tactical repeater. This is a 45, 50 pound unit that we sneak into the, uh, we snug into the back seat and is a uh, repeater for um, uh, for ground communications, uh, something we call hybrid uh, flights to enable uh, ground units to talk to each other with a lot more reliability. Uh, that's probably one of the more boring missions orbiting over a search area, for example but a very valuable one. Um, the other missions that we do are laid out there. These are uh, very powerful aircraft, uh, the, uh, obviously for a single engine propeller plane, very reliable and very safe, I might add. Um, all, of the, all of the planes are extremely exquisitely maintained um, and uh, we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, of course, I'm happy to answer any questions I can after the presentation. Uh, reference to the airborne imagery uh, that is a handheld, uh, I think there were some efforts to mount some uh, cameras on the wings that could be operated through an iPad. I don't think that was successful, so it fell to the airborne photographers like myself to sit in the back and uh, handheld use a, a, a Nikon camera with a zoom lens that we uh, take ground pictures with. Uh, infrastructure, obviously disaster related damage, uh, any other targets uh, re uh, requested of us from FEMA and other agencies. As I mentioned briefly, we have a long standing and unusual collaboration with the uh, Forestry and Parks Department up here in Vermont, helping them monitor the health of Vermont forests um, through photography and uh, airborne uh, bringing up some of their experts in the backseat of things that they can observe uh, firsthand damage being done by the ash borer, for example, and uh, help uh, map that out. And I think that's that's a, a collaboration we've had now for three years in a row, and it's uh, frankly very valuable and, and terribly interesting to, uh, as I've learned more about it. Uh, that's, uh, that's it, Hillary, next slide, please. All right, so 2021, we, uh, we uh, changed our mission slightly to accommodate the needs uh, of Vermont communities for disaster relief. I uh, personally participated in some of these pandemic support missions, but that was done by all of our senior members and cadets all around the state, helping provide P making and providing PPEs for a lot of uh, hospital workers around the state, um, helping the guard distribute uh, packages of food to uh, Vermonters in need um, during that crisis. And we stand ready, of course, to do that again. SARX drills, I mentioned to you, the uh, electronic locator uh, searches, uh, a very a wide range of, uh, of missions that are and scenarios that are uh, keep it very interesting for us. The uh, Department of Forestry uh, missions I mentioned. And uh, this October, uh, uh, Captain uh, Kelly uh, Sutton Bosley is planning a the wing's first encampment over four weekends in October of uh, of our cadets to get uh, a very uh, in depth training in uh, whether it's aerospace education, uh, search skills, physical skills, and other things uh, that I know I, I've not participated in myself, but I know our older uh, members have had done a lot of these encampments in the past and they found it very enriching and very memorable. Uh, that's just some of the accomplishments. And also I believe our membership grew uh, during the pandemic and um, afterwards, uh, a, a nice accomplishment uh, in testament to our leadership uh, in the wing. Next slide, please, Hillary. 
Uh, to accomplish uh, a lot of these other missions, obviously we need things on the ground. We get assessment that 182s don't do well on on uh, the interstate, so we have to rely on four-wheeled vehicles uh, to take our cadets to various events, to uh, get to uh, site searches uh, as required for our ground teams to get out and deploy with uh, the first responders to help as needed. Um, they are uh, the ground teams, especially, are trained with the emergency locator beacon uh, technology uh, to help them locate uh, aircraft and uh, missing skiers and flyers as, as requested. Um, we're a relatively small wing. I know some of the wings around the country have uh, literally uh, dozens of these vehicles, uh, hundreds of aircraft. Uh, this is, uh, but we have enough for our needs, I believe, at this point. Um, Next slide, please, uh, Hillary. Uh, communications equipment, this is not my strong suit. Uh, we have, uh, I believe we have everything for different scenarios uh, to help support uh, emergency services in the field. We have a trail that's kitted out with numerous uh, uh, radio sets to help, uh, as I mentioned, the link establishment around the, uh, around the state. Um, this all helps keep the ground and air, air crews uh, coordinated and, of course, in touch with first responders and our command uh, incident commanders uh, in the Civil Air Patrol and the other uh, services that we work with. Next uh, slide, please, Hillary. Uh, this breaks down our, our uh, uh, various types of personnel. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm one of the mission observers. Uh, Incident commanders all trained in the ICS system, all, all certified. I think we've we've added one or two to that. Uh, mission based staff uh, fluctuates, um, but this you know there's plenty of room for growth. There's plenty of opportunities to bring your different skills and interests to any number of missions that we have on an ongoing basis in the Vermont Wing. And I welcome any and all of you to contact us about how uh, where you might be. A lot of people interested in indulging their uh, interest in, in radio communications, I think will find a great home with us. For example, you do not have to be a pilot to join the Civil Air Patrol. I am not a pilot, uh, but I've had a lot of fun and um, the people are great. So this is hopefully giving you a taste of what we do and what we can accomplish. Next uh, slide, Hillary. Uh, capabilities I've mentioned, uh, these have all, all of these have been put to work in the, in the pandemic, uh, if not only by Vermont Wing, but by other wings around the country. Uh, for, as I mentioned, transporting vaccine supplies to remote communities was a critical mission for a lot of our, um, for a lot of our uh, colleagues around the country. Um, of course, uh, tissue and organ uh, transport. Uh, a lot of uh, our colleagues do transport uh, search dogs uh, for the state police. Uh, that's something I don't believe we've done in the Vermont wing, but I think we stand ready to help with that as needed. The uh, airborne support for uh, radio communications, I mentioned about the tactical repeaters that we have carried in the uh, back seat of our Cessnas uh, to help support ground communications in, uh, in rough terrain. Um, next slide, please, uh, Hillary. This is the trailer I mentioned, uh, rapid deployment communications trailer that uh, we can bring to help uh, support uh, internet and radio communications in disaster scenes. And we have several of our personnel very well trained to help operate uh, that. And they exercise with that, uh, I believe, several times a month, uh, 12 months a year, of course. Next slide, please, Hillary. Uh, more more detail on how we communicate the ground teams versus uh, communicating uh, to our airborne teams. Uh, we exercise with that fairly regularly, helping uh, vector in ground teams to a crash site or a simulated crash site or to a missing uh, missing person or missing aircraft. Uh, something that we exercise with quite regularly. Um, all of it obviously controlled through the incident command staff back at our mission base, whether that's in Burlington or the uh, other squadron sites or even mobile uh, bases for that. Next slide, please, Hillary. 
uh, an overview of the high frequency support communications that Civil Air Patrol provides, uh, and I know which are exercised on a regular basis. See, it's got pretty excellent coverage all around the state. Colonel Lazari is our resident expert in all of these communications. I know I'd be pleased to answer any questions you have uh, on that. And I know a lot of you are obviously much more familiar with this technology than I am, and I apologize for that. But there's a lot to be said about this and uh, a lot of capability in here in Vermont that um, you should be very proud of. Next slide, please, Hillary. This is this is a, a very active area for civil air patrol. Obviously, it's something not well known. It's helping identify, um, excuse me, locate missing persons through their cell phone uh, cell phones by getting by uh, vectoring in from the nearest uh, towers around the country. Uh, again, not not a tech, not a um, capability that I can talk in depth about. But it's an unheralded capability and contribution from the Civil Air Patrol in Vermont and elsewhere. And uh, if you have questions on, on how that can be deployed for your various uh, agencies, I'd be happy to uh, put you in touch with our resident experts on that. Next slide, please, Hillary. Costs, we mentioned we're, we're a volunteer uh, service. Uh, I can, you can insert a volunteer joke there if you want, but I'm very proud of that. Uh, very cost effective uh, in terms of fuel, in terms of equipment, all of it is paid for, excuse me, the, the airframes are paid for by the U.S. Air Force. The uh, cost, uh, there is some billing, obviously it's got to be set up for different missions that uh, help us better meet the needs of our local uh, agencies and the national agencies. Um, but again, much cheaper to fly volunteers in a Cessna aircraft than a lot of uh, other fixed wing and of course, uh, helicopter uh, airframes uh, when those aren't available or uh, something with a Cessna might be more preferable for the mission requirements, photography and so forth. Um, happy to try to answer any questions there that we can. Next slide, please, Hillary. This is something, uh, a very self-explanatory how to get in touch with us, get us deployed to help your various uh, agencies uh, get to work for you. Uh, it has to come from the top. Uh, of course, you can reach us directly. Colonel Beach uh, can presumably help that make that go a lot more quickly. But uh, for most requests, it's got to come through. It has to come through the Air Force or the CAP uh, National Operations Center uh, down in uh, in uh, Alabama, I believe. Uh, but we can be reached directly and get things in motion um, for whatever the mission may be. Next slide, please, Hillary. Uh, again, uh, a review of our organization and our responsibilities, uh, where the tasking uh, and so forth comes from within the uh, National Defense Establishment. Uh, and of course, we can. You know, we also work with civil agencies very frequently as well, as I mentioned, FEMA and others. Next slide, please, Hillary. Uh, another view of how to get us working uh, for you on a specific mission or or generally. And uh, they're very responsive, obviously, in getting us off the ground or, or getting our teams in vans when needed. And uh, we're very proud of that, of course, and we practice for that all the time. Next slide, please, Hillary. So this is how to reach us directly. Uh, our headquarters is at the uh, Burlington International Airport um, and can be reached directly there. And uh, Colonel Beach, I uh, can provide you his number as well. If that would uh, enhance, uh, that will enhance access, but we're very responsive for obvious reasons um, through this Goro Central phone number. 